uh, welcome students welcome to your uh, third session for Android user interface so in the last session uh, if you remember we had studied about the directory structure we had studied about the types of files all the different type of files that are there and what are the uses of each file so that that is what we had covered in the last video also we did uh, the views and the view groups and what is the basic difference between views and view groups and then we had related the uh, hierarchy of the view and view groups uh, in the actual screen by showing you a login screen so uh, continuing from where we left off um, we will uh, try to explain you what are views and what are view groups in this session so you'll get to know in details about the views and the view groups uh, in the coming slides this will be our major topic for this session and along with that we'll discuss about the XML structure of the code uh, briefly that will come in the later part of the video so let's start with the first slide which is linear layout so basic layouts and view groups so Android has many view groups and uh, many types of views so we'll cover the main uh, main two views here uh, so first is the linear layout and the second is the relative layout so uh, let's start with the linear layout first so here uh, a layout that arranges other views either horizontally in a single column or vertically in a single row so this means that linear layout gives you the ability to arrange your view uh, in either horizontal direction or in the vertical direction so that is the basis of linear layout so you can either it's either uh, horizontal or vertical it cannot be both in a single layout so let's suppose we have uh, three views here so if we want to keep uh, keep our view inside a linear layout in the horizontal direction then our three views will also come in the horizontal direction only and same goes for vertical so this is a, a vertical linear layout and if we want to keep our views inside this linear layout then it will be placed vertically only so 1 1 2 and 3 and 1 2 and 3 uh, but the relative layout if we go to the relative layout it is a little different to a linear layout so here it is let's see the definition of a relative layout first so relative layout is a view group that displays child views in a, in relative positions the position of each view can be specified as relative to sibling elements so what does this mean? so this means that there is a dependency of the uh, of the views uh, with each other so if we take an example like if we have one view let's let's say view one and we want to uh, use another view on the left of side or the right of side then we'll have to make a dependency that the view uh, the next view should be on the left side of the view one or on the right side of the view one similarly we can place the view on top of view one and on top on uh, or uh, below uh, view one so that is how we can put uh, relative positions um, in using relative layout like it is written here such as to the left of or below another view so you can assign dependencies of the views in this uh, using this uh, layout uh, we will study these layouts uh, the linear layout and the relative layout in detail and uh, because it is a major part in the, the designing phases so this is part of our course so we'll study them in detail and then you'll get to learn more about layouts so coming on to the next slide we have the basic view widgets or views what are the basic views so now we'll talk about the views uh, earlier we had talked about the view groups so these were the view groups and now we'll talk about the views so here we have basic uh, four uh, types of views one is text view edit text button and image view 
so we'll just go through each one of them briefly here so if we talk about the text view here a user interface element that displays text to the user so let's take an example so let's suppose you have an application in which you log in using your username and password so if you successfully log in you you can see a, a welcome screen message there can be a welcome screen message that uh, welcome to the application so this welcome to the application text is a non editable text but you can just view it so that is um, that is introduced through a text view so all the static text that you see across the application those are introduced using the text view uh, view so coming on to the second point the second view is the edit text a user interface element for entering and modifying text so what this basically means is that if in your application you have uh, you have a field where you need to enter let's suppose an email or your name or your phone number or you need to enter any information so that in that case we use the edit text view so that is how we can use the edit text view to enter either a field information that could be text that could be number that could be any alphanumeric uh, entry so that is uh, this is where we use the edit text view so basically it gives the user the ability to uh, either enter the data or edit the data or change the data uh, then uh, if you look at the third view that is the button it is a user interface element the user can tap or click to perform an action so basically what it means is that any um, any information that we've entered we need to perform an action on that information then we use the button view so button will uh, help the information to to send out the information from the front end to the back end so if we take an example of a login page so once we fill in the information of our username and password we need to send this information across to the server for uh, uh, for authentication purposes so this will happen through a button view so the information entered will go to the server once we click on the button so that is why it it uh, wherever we need to perform an action we will use a button view so coming on to the fourth point here that is the image view so image view displays image resources for example bitmap or drawable resources so uh, if you remember from our last session we had discussed the uh, directory structure and in that directory structure we had shown the drawable folder in which all the uh, images and uh, all the display uh, images that can be kept uh, are kept inside the drawable resources folder um, then accordingly we can keep the um, resolution size images in the mip map folder so this is where the image view helps us out if we talk about the bitmap here so bitmap is used bitmap resources are used when we uh, try to pick uh, images directly from our phone uh, let's say from a camera or the phone's library then we directly can use them using the bitmap resources uh, inside the image view so this is where we uh, use the bitmap resources and drawable resources are used for uh, keeping your uh, normal icons your normal images inside the uh, application so these are the basic views uh, the four views that we have talked about there are other um, views also like check boxes uh, radio buttons etc so we'll touch base on them once we use them in our application during any designing uh, designing any screen so in case if you want to study uh, these views in detail then uh, you can just go to this link i'll just show you here so you can go to 
uh, Google, you can type text view Android. So if you go here and you click on the first link, it will open up the text view. It will basically open up all the views and uh, the various uses and how can you use each view. So here you can uh, study them in detail. So if you look at this site here, it will give you the detailed information of all the views and how to use them and here is the code how to write them. So we will also uh, show you how to write this code uh, a little while later in this session. So here you can see how we can use uh, the views inside uh, using Java. So basically you can uh, call the view using its ID and uh, you can put in text that you want to show inside the view. So that is done using the Java code here. So along with this there are some XML attributes here. So for the view so you can read them in detail uh, because this is uh, this is given in detail here so you can go through them one by one and uh, for your own knowledge sake this will help you to better understand views so we'll go back to our slide now and we'll go to the next slide uh, now as we know that uh, the Android language uh, is basically made up of two languages one is XML and one is Java so here we see the basic XML code structure so every language has its own coding and has its own structure to write in so even XML language has its own code structure so l let's see here first is the camel case any element name will follow camel case means if the name of the element is combination of two or more words then every attached word will start with a capital letter and by rule first letter of any element will be capital so what does this mean so this means that if we have two um, if we have element that is made up of two words combination of two words then the first letter of every word will be in capital letter to uh, this basically uh, goes to show that the capital letter shows the starting of the word so if we have the capital letter here and small letters here and then a capital letter here then we can detect that this word the second word is different from the first word so that is why we have uh, capital letters in the starting of every word if there is a combination of two words so continuing with this let us see what is the code structure for uh, an XML code so if we go to this slide now you will see the structure of an text view element here so this is the text view and these are the code written inside text view and uh, this is the structure that it follows so the text view is the UI element name the here the text view is the UI element name and here you can see that text view is following the camel case uh, uh, architecture so XML follows a two-sided structure so one side I've highlighted here in yellow like this this one so this is the element property structure or the attribute structure so this is where the attributes are written out or they are called also the property elements so they are defined on the left side always so here we have the ID property we have the layout width property we have the layout height height property and uh, it is part of Android so that is why it's here we have written Android so this is the structure for the left side and then we put an equal to sign and then we assign the value of that property 
so these are the values that we have assigned for each property but the values are always assigned with double quotes they are always assigned uh, within double quotes here as you can see we have assigned this value for this property with double quotes so values are always defined or uh, supplied with double quotes for a property so I'll just tell you about something about this ID here that we've written so why do we need to define an ID here is basically um, if you if we take the example of the login screen we had two text views there so um, edit text views there so one was the username and the other was the password so we need we need to define or we need to give an ID to each of the uh, views so the username uh, view will have its own ID and the password view will have its own ID so that is why we need to define the IDs of the views so this is why uh, basically uh, when we write the Java code we can pick up the uh, view ID and then we can pass that view ID inside our Java code in order to pick up the information from that uh, text view or edit edit view so that is why we need to define the ID otherwise the information written inside that view will not be picked up by the code so the syntax for declaring an ID is something like this at the rate plus ID slash name the IDs are also of two types but currently we will only talk about one type because the second type we are not using currently so uh, like I said that this ID attribute needs to be defined or declared only when there is a need for using it in the Java class so if we do not require its, its uh, use in the Java class then we don't need to define or declare an ID it's only when we need to uh, declare or uh, we need to use this uh, attribute or uh, ID attribute here in the Java class only then we need to define it otherwise it's not compulsory then coming on to the two other two properties that is the layout width and the layout height uh, these are very important when it comes to XML structure because uh, without these two properties or attributes the page cannot exist the screen needs to have a width and a height we need to define the width and the height uh, properties uh, in order for that to exist otherwise it will not exist the screen will not exist so the values that are assigned to these attributes width and height are wrap content so what is wrap content why is it used we'll just see in our live Android studio video and uh, we'll just tell you the other views that are also other values that can be used for these uh, for these attributes so here we have the Android studio open so here uh, we have we have the main activity dot java file open and the main underscore activity underscore main dot xml file open so and last time if you remember that we had created an application called my application so this is uh, the java file for that application only so we have a linear layout code written here but uh, we'll just show you exactly uh, this is all extra code that is there we'll just delete this and uh, we'll delete this as well so this is the linear layout code and here we we don't require this okay so now so now we have the linear layout code here which is which is similar to the uh, uh, which is similar to the slide that we showed you so here are the attributes 
that we showed you and these are the values uh, that are given to the attributes so here the value is given as match parent we'll just discuss about match parent a little a little later so firstly uh, let's see this uh, this is the linear layout and here this is a this file this schema file is basically um, is a is a default file which you should not edit which is it is not recommended that you edit this schema file because these files are auto generated and they um, they are they are just telling us that we are using android uh, system the apk is android and um, the if we if we uh, edit these schema files then our code might get buggy so coming back to the um, the attributes layout width and layout height these are the compulsory attributes that we need to uh, we need to define otherwise the screen will not exist so these these layouts need to be defined uh, for the screen to exist so as we had discussed in the last video and this video also that uh, there are view groups and views so this is the view group the linear layout is the view group and these are the view the text view is the view and uh, the uh, view group needs to be outside the view so the view is kept inside the view group always so you can use another you can either use a view group also but it has to be inside the main view group so you can define other other uh, views also here like we have defined the text view you can define the edit view edit text view so uh, that is how you can uh, write uh, the code for each view so if we talk about the text view here you can see the value is wrap content for the layout width and wrap content value is for the layout uh, height attribute also so what uh, i'll just show you here on the screen what it what uh, this means so if you see the screen so this whole screen this white whole screen is the linear layout which is this so this is the linear layout then we have taken a text view in which there is a property called text so in this we have given the value as hello world here so this hello world is shown here if you see this this hello world that we have written here is being displayed on the screen here so uh, we'll just make changes to this uh, text view view and uh, before doing that i'll just add a a background so that we actually know uh, once we change the layout width and height we actually know how much uh, the width and height are being changed by so we need to define the background activity here so we'll define the color so this is the color file color folder from which uh, we'll pick up the default colors that are there so these are the colors which are existing in the color folder so so we can use any one of them so let's let's suppose we pick color accent so here you can see that the background of your text uh, there is there is a color in the background of your text so this is uh, this is the color that we have just set with this uh, attribute background attribute and this is the preview of that color uh, this shows which color you have selected and this is the code for that color the uh, basic syntax structure of that uh, defining the color so uh, what we'll do here is we'll change the value of this uh, 
of this attribute which is the width attribute and we will change this value to match parent so here you can just select match parent and click enter it will get selected so now if i just if you just look at if you notice this pink background now this the width has increased till the whole width of the screen so i'll just zoom in so now you can see that this width of uh, the background for the text view has increased till the width of the screen earlier it was till uh, till the width of the uh, till the width of the word only uh, the sentence so wrap content basically wrap if you use wrap content again it will reduce the width of the of the background till the text width so for example uh, the if we increase the if we increase the sentence saying hello world well welcome to your to your android class so now as our width has increased the background width also has increased accordingly to the uh, width of the sentence that we have written so that is what wrap content does but if we change this width from wrap content to match parent then it will take on the width of the whole whole screen here the width of the complete screen will become the uh, the value for the text view so basically match parent is your um, is your view group uh, the basic the root node which is the view group so the uh, width uh, the layout width will take on the width of your uh, the main view group so if we do the same thing here with height then i'll just show you what will happen if you do this so now the whole height of your attribute of this uh, text view uh, text view view will take on the uh, will will become equal to the uh, view group uh, height that is the linear layout height so initially i told you that the linear the linear layout was the complete screen here the uh, initially it was a white background but now because we have given the color so now the background is pink so now uh, the text view the width and the height are the value is equal to the match parent so match parent is the complete view from this side to this side and from top to bottom so these were the two uh, values that we had given earlier it was wrap text and now we have given the match parent value so there is another value that we can give which i'll just show you here if we can give static values to the width and the height so we can how can we do that i'll just show you here so if we write 100 dp so the width becomes defined according to the value that is given here so this is how we can give a static value to the width so dp here basically means uh, density so what it basically means is that uh, it is density independent pixel so uh, the pixel density is independent of the actual density of the uh, defined width so here if we change the height to let's say wrap content again and we keep on adding text here that this is a great day so 
you see that the width is not increasing but the height is increasing the reason being we have given the height as wrap content and we have defined the width as 100 dp so that is why the width will never increase it's only the height that will increase as we keep on adding the text but if we keep uh, if we keep the height also static let's say 200 dp and we increase the text by just writing any random text here then we'll see that after a certain time now let me write something here that hi this is a great day so now as you can see that this last sentence of mine is not showing up in the uh, text view the reason being that we have given static height and width so that is why uh, after a certain limit the text that is that increases after that certain limit will not show it will it will be there but it will not show because the size of the text view cannot accommodate that much text so let's delete all of this and uh, let's show you the next step so now let's talk about something about the dp so basically dp is like pixel uh, we know that all android phones or for that matter all phones have a certain resolution and those that resolution is measured in the pixel so basically uh, it basically means that how much uh, how much density is there how much pixel density is there in the screen size so more uh, pixels in in that screen the more density will be that for more pixel density will be there in the screen so let's study more about uh, what are the uh, density independent pixels and how is it measured so basically here we have shown you that uh, what are low density medium density and high density so as you can see that this yellow box is one pixel so for a low density one inch by one inch square we can see that this yellow box there are few pixels here so but as we go on to the medium density uh, of the same size one inch by one inch the number of the number of boxes inside the that is pixel boxes has increased and for high density you can see that the number of the pixel boxes has drastically increased so that is the difference between the high density pixel uh, high density uh, resolution screens and low uh, density resolution screens so this is uh, this is how the density of a screen is determined according to the number of pixels packed per uh, inch so uh, in a nutshell pixel is the smallest unit in a screen and the density uh, pixel is the number of pixels that can be accommodated in a in per unit area size of the screen so that is why if we see a low density square here we can see the number of pixels accommodated are less than the high density square here so the size of the square is same but the number of pixels inside the square has increased for high density and for low density the number of uh, pixels inside the same size is less so if you set your dimensions according to the pixel size then this is how the view will look like so what basically it means that if we have a 20 by 20 
pixel size image uh, then in the low density phones then that same image will cover more area than in a high density phone so for example if this is the image for low density phone then in a low density phone this image will look something like this a large it will look larger than what uh, it will look on the smaller uh, on the uh, high density phones so the reason being is that in low density uh, screen resolution the uh, if we cover four pixels here let's suppose these are the four boxes here so this four boxes that is four pixels and in the same medium density phone these are the four pixels here so as you can see that four pixels cover a lot less area in the medium density phone and in the high density phone they cover even lesser area so that is why the high density icons are normally smaller than the low density icons so on a low density phone the icons will be larger and on the high density uh, high resolution screen phones the icons will be smaller so basically the units that we need to define while uh, handling the images or icons are dp and uh, it the pixel uh, the pixel unit should not be used so that is the main premise of this screen that the units that we need to define while uh, using an image or an icon then uh, we should use the uh, density independent pixel unit that is the dp unit so now let's move back to our android studio so uh, till now we have discussed the text view um, where we can define the text uh, the static text that needs to be shown on the screen so now let's use another element here so but before doing that let's change the width to wrap content and the height also to wrap content and just remove the we can remove this uh, text and here we need to define another element which is edit text so we need to keep in mind that the first letter is capital because we are following the camel case uh, structure while writing the code so this is the edit text so there is a property called hint which can be defined here as first android then hint here and then the value user name so you'll see you'll notice that here you can see a text username that you've written here so uh, what is the basic difference between hint and uh, text text view so i'll just tell you so the basic difference is that in the um, in the uh, text view we are writing a static text but in uh, using a hint we are telling the user we are actually defining this uh, view called edit text and edit text what the user needs to type in that field so for example if we take the example of uh, the user uh, the login screen so the username the user needs to know in which field the username uh, user has to type in the username or the password so for that we need to give the user a hint so this hint will show up inside the edit text view and it will indicate the user uh, the fields that the uh, that he has to enter 
so for example this username uh, uh, the user uh, user will know the username field and will type in the username and similarly we can give the user a password hint wherein the user will know that he needs to type in the password in that field also once the user starts typing in this uh, field and uh, this hint will uh, go away it will hide it will no longer be um, it will no longer be visible to the user so i'll just show you how this will look like by running the emulator so we go to the avd manager and here we have the emulator so So while this emulator starts to run, I'll tell you about another thing here that the username, uh, the username here written here, has is in pink, pinkish color, because the color we have defined here is the accent. So whatever the color that you define uh, will will be attributed to that uh, to that field. So if we just remove this color, it will take on the default color that is there, which is uh, which is a grayish color with a username typed uh, because of the hint and the underline. Again, the underline width can be um, given statically or it can be given as match parent which will which will uh, which will increase the width of the line till the end of the page because of the linear layout so this is the this is the way we can increase the width of the uh, the underline of the text but we need to come back to wrap content only so we'll just type in wrap content and it will show us the original size. So if I set a text property for this hint, then that whatever the text I will write in that property, that will show up in the field. So for example, if I write Android and then text and uh, Let's suppose I have, I, I say text here. So here the username has changed to text. So this will override the hint. The text property will override the hint property. Also the hint uh, text will be in a off gray color, light gray color while the text uh, color will be uh, the color of the text will be in a more darker shade so basically the hint will give the username um, uh, the option the hint of what to type in that field and it will also hide once the user starts to type in that field so I think the emulator will be is ready now and let's run the application on the emulator here we are seeing the emulator version so this will take a few seconds while it runs so this is our emulator with the application running on it so uh, one of the properties of edit text uh, view is that once you tap on it then a keyboard will open up the keyboard will get presented to the user so we call that the view becomes focusable so then um, uh, that means that uh, once you click on the text then the keyboard opens up and it uh, focuses on that particular field also along with that we can give um, some area we can uh, we can we can uh, define an area for on the left or the right for adding a image or providing an icon next to the edit text uh, field so if there is a password icon we can give a lock uh, lock icon or if there is a mail 
field then we can give an email uh, icon to the right or the left side of the edit text field so coming to the emulator so if we can see you can see that uh, the text that we have written here in the text property it is showing here and the because we have clicked it because it's focusable that is why uh, we uh, we have been presented with a keyboard where you can type type your text so this is like a normal keyboard on a normal device android device and once all the text is uh, deleted then we can see the hint so this is how we can keep the hint once the whole word is deleted once the whole once the whole text is deleted from the field we can keep the username hint here by defining it in this hint property so what if let's see what what happens once we remove the text property and just keep the username property here and then run our application so now you can see only the hint that is typed here you cannot see the text there is no default text that is uh, visible on to the on the field it is only the username hint that is written in the hint property so as soon as you start typing here the hint will disappear so this is all about the hint and the text property so then let's see another uh, another view called button so here we select button and here we and here we define the um, the layout width let's keep the layout width as match parent so the button width has become equal to the width of the whole screen so that is how we can increase or decrease the uh, button uh, width as well so there is a property for the button as well which is text there and here if we write a text that will show us in the button so basically if we want to define the text of what type of button it is we need to uh, add a property called text and inside that property whatever the text we write that will show up in the button so this is the submit text that we've written and this is the submit text that is being shown in the button to indicate to the user that uh, he needs to click on the submit button to in order to provide the data to the server also if you if you notice here that there is a grayish background grayish bluish background that is the default background for a button and uh, we can define the color like we define the color for the edit text view also so we can define the color here also and whatever the color we give using the color uh, color uh, folder uh, we can uh, that will show up here in the submit button so uh, button has got an inbuilt default property that it is clickable so we don't need to define it here because it is already inbuilt in that um, in that view so that property is a default property of the button so here we have another view that is the image image view so this is the image view so image view does not have a text property so we can remove this from here in this we need to set a content so we'll use a property which is source src so here you can uh, define from where you want to pick up your image source or your icon source so for example if we have
if we have the so we here we can see the folders from where we can pick up our content from so we have a drawable folder and the map map folder which we covered in the last video so we know that the drawable folder contains all our icons and uh, the other uh, uh, the other images but the map map folder contains our main images for uh, of various resolutions so here if we select the map map and press enter so uh, in this map map folder we can have multiple images also and we can have a single image also so but we don't know that uh, w which images are there in the map map folder so for that what we can do is uh, we can uh, press alt plus control plus space and whatever the image if there are only if there is only one image then that will come directly if there are multiple images then it will show us the list of those images and then we can select those images from the list but here we only have one image so that is why it has picked up uh, the single image so to this image we can also uh, apply the same values like we did for edit text and text view like match parent if we so if we do the uh, if we supply the value of match parent we can see the image size has increased to almost the size of the screen because of the match parent value here and we can define the image size also statically by providing static uh, sizes as well in this uh, value so basically this was all about your views and view groups and your XML uh, code structure how to write it and what are the attributes values properties and uh, we will study these views and view groups in greater detail in the coming videos so this was just an introductory video for you to know what is the basis or basic structure of uh, views and view groups Thank you so much for watching.